Our goal today is to review equivalence relations and to address a common misconception. Before we can review equivalence relations, we need to also review just relations. So what's a relation? Well, we're gonna say that a binary relation on a set X is a subset of X cross X, and it's the subset that represents the uh, pairs X and Y uh, for which the relation holds, for which X tilde Y. So we got this subset, we'll call it S, of uh, X cross X, and we say that X tilde Y, if X comma Y is an element of that subset S, and we say that x doesn't tilde y, that the relation doesn't hold if uh, the pair x comma y isn't an element of that subset s. An equivalence relation is a special kind of relation. It's a relation that satisfies some additional properties. It should be reflexive, meaning that for all little x and big x, x tilde x. It should be symmetric, meaning for little x and y and big x, x tilde y if and only if y tilde x. And finally, it should be transitive, meaning for little x, y, and z in big X, if x tilde y and y tilde z, then x tilde z. The key example to think about in this course is congruence, right? To think about the equivalence relation of congruence modulo m on the set z of the integers. So that's a lot of definitions to absorb. But with all those definitions, there's also a common misconception that I'd like to discuss. Here's something that is emphatically not a theorem. This is absolutely not true. But here's the claim. A symmetric transitive relation is necessarily reflexive. So here's the proof. Let's let x be some element of big X. And I'm trying to show that x tilde x, right? That's what I'm trying to prove. I'm trying to prove reflexivity. And I'm going to get to use symmetry and transitivity along the way. Now pick some y, any y, so that x tilde y, and then apply symmetry to conclude that y tilde x. Now we know that x tilde y and y tilde x, so by transitivity, we know that x tilde x, which is what we wanted to show. We wanted to show that tilde was a reflexive relation. Now it's somewhat traditional at the end of proofs to draw a little tombstone symbol to represent the end of the proof. It's especially appropriate at the end of these false proofs to draw a, a tombstone, I think representing the, the death of the truth here. I mean, this theorem is, is not a theorem, right? There's something wrong with this proof. We'll come back to this false proof in a little bit, but I'd like us to spend a little while uh, thinking about how we can show it's impossible uh, to prove something from something else. Right, let's suppose that uh, we want to show that it's impossible to prove P uh, just using the properties Q1, Q2, da, 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 QM. Well, if we could find an example of uh, something which satisfied Q1, Q2, da, 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 QN, but didn't satisfy P, then that example would be enough to show it's impossible to prove P just by using the properties Q1, Q2, da, 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 QN. Well, here's an extremely instructive example. Let's think about the greater than or equal to relation on the integers. So this is a relation which is uh, reflexive because for any integer x, x is greater than or equal to x. It's also transitive. If I've got integers x, y, and z, and x is bigger than or equal to y, and y is bigger than or equal to z, then x is bigger than or equal to z. But it's not symmetric. Uh, for instance, 2 is bigger than or equal to 1, but 1 is not uh, bigger than or equal to 2. This is just an incredibly important idea. If you want to understand why certain axioms are needed, why do we have to include these axioms in the definition of such and such? Well, you want to find examples of uh, objects that satisfy a lot of axioms, but maybe not that particular axiom you're studying. And this has implications, I think, also for you know, the nature of mathematics. Sometimes people think that mathematics is, is mostly a collection of theorems, but the examples are just as important, and it's often those examples that really can guide us to understand which sorts of theorems we should be uh, seeking. Here's an example that's just absolutely hilarious. Let's take a set X, and I wanted to find a particular relation on the set X, the empty relation. So this is the relation uh, that I build by uh, using the empty subset of uh, X cross X. So it's a relation that never holds. It's never the case that X tilde Y for any X and Y in big X. That empty relation is symmetric and transitive, but it's not reflexive. So why is it symmetric? Well, symmetry just says that X tilde Y if and only if Y tilde X. But x never tilde y, right? It's never the case that x tilde y because this is the empty relation which never holds. And consequently, uh, it is true that whenever x tilde y, then y tilde x because it never happens. 
Similarly, uh, for transitivity, right, transitivity is also a conditional statement and the hypothesis that x tilde y and y tilde z, that never happens and consequently doesn't matter what the conclusion is. Uh, but nevertheless, and transitivity is true, it's vacuously true because the hypothesis never happens. Uh, but reflexivity is really a different beast, right? Reflexivity isn't a conditional statement. It's actually the statement that for all x in big X, x tilde x. And I mean, we cooked up the uh, empty relation to be a relation that never holds and consequently it's not reflexive because uh, it's never the case that x tilde y uh, and in particular it's not the case that x tilde x. Well, let's look back to that false proof, right? We had this false proof that symmetry and transitivity implied reflexivity. But we've got this example now, the example of the empty relation, uh, which is symmetric and transitive, but not reflexive. So armed with the empty relation, we know that this proof can't possibly be valid. But well, where exactly does this proof break down? It breaks down right here, where we have to find a y so that x tilde y. And this is exactly why it's such a great thing to be thinking about the empty relation, because the empty relation is exactly a relation for which we can't find a y so that x tilde y. There's a lot of possible takeaways from this discussion today. Maybe the most important one is this, the empty set, and just how hilarious it is to have statements that are vacuously true. You know, statements like every element of the empty set is me. You know, so I think that's pretty funny. Um, but it's an important thing to think about, right? I mean, it's an important thing to reflect on that the empty relation by failing to be uh, reflexive, but being symmetric and transitive is a great example to see uh, why it's not possible to prove uh, reflexivity just from symmetry and transitivity.